everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name's Mel. Thank you so much for joining me today for my February wrap up. February was a little bit of a funny month for me. Personal reasons I'm not going to go into here, but it did also therefore affect my reading a little bit. I started a few things, put a couple of things on hold, DNF something, and just took longer than expected with other things. So I did manage to read. I managed to read five books, which is still pretty good. I apologize for the noise that has just started up outside. It's feeling actually quite a bit warmer than I was expecting it to today. So the window is open and so noises from outside come in, which, you know, we will just have to deal with. Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah. Let's go into that. The first book that I want to talk to you about today is actually the book that I DNF'd, so the book that I started but did not finish. And when I was grabbing things off the shelves, I managed to forget to actually grab it. So I will put an image of it somewhere up here. And that is, um, what is it called? Give me a second. The Foundling by Sarah, no? by, oh goodness, this is going well, isn't it? By Stacey Halls. This was a buddy read that I was supposed to read with Helen from Helen's Bookhaven, but some of the topic subject of this book was just a little bit hard for me to read. I think that it would be potentially hard for other people to read, but it just was hitting to the bone quite a bit for me. So I ended up deciding that I didn't want to read it. I actually don't know whether Helen continue with, you continued with it or not or whether she put it on hold herself. So I do need to contact her and find out. I'm pretty sure that she continued but I'm not certain. So we may read it again together at some point. It definitely seemed like the kind of book that I would be interested in under different circumstances but I just couldn't read it this month. So it is a book about the foundling hospital that used to exist in London in the Victorian era. I don't recall exactly when, uh, but basically the idea was that women who couldn't afford or couldn't, for various, whatever reason, of money or personal, whatever, for whatever reason, who couldn't manage to couldn't keep their children, could take the ch children to this hospital. Potentially not everyone was kept, but potentially the children were kept by the hospital, um, kind of like taking them to a orphanage. Um, and then it was, then what happened in the book is, this is all from the blurb, the woman who drops this child off um, a number of years later goes back there to claim the child because that's how it's set up. You can go back and claim your child once you are more capable of caring for them and the child is gone and she is told that she's already collected her. So it's kind of a bit of a what mystery situation. So like I said it seems like it's going to be really good. It, the first few pages were well written and it's just the topic. So I DNF'd that one. So obviously no rating. Before I go into any of the rest of the books because they do have ratings if you watched my January wrap up, you will know that I use Corepile, which is the rating system created by G from Book Roast. And she basically has separated the rating system into a bunch of different sort of headings that you would rate, give ratings to. So did the book contain characters that you thought were well written or interesting was the action fun or interesting well written etc I have adapted it a little bit so that it suits me a bit more than Corpile did so <laughs> I've called it Ukape um which is much less fun sounding than Corpile but anyway it's basically um enjoyment for the beginning of the book writing style character action plot pacing and then enjoyment at the end of the book because I do find as I'm sure many of us do that sometimes we can get in we can take a little while to get into the book but then we like the majority of it or we like the ending of it so the enjoyment at the beginning might be a bit lower than at the end so I wanted to reflect that um, which you will see in my rating in a minute. So the first book that I want to talk about today is yet another book that I managed not to grab off the shelf. And I can see it looking at me over there, but somehow I didn't grab it. I really need to look at my 
journal before I actually sit down to film. Anyway, <laughs> it is The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon. I started this in January, but I didn't finish it in January, so it rolled over into February. So what is this book about? It is very difficult to describe. I am not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but it is sort of dystopian slash utopian depending on which side of the tracks you're from version of London in about 1900 I think roughly or maybe it was 1800 the the veil between the supernatural and natural worlds kind of became thinner and a bunch of different humans were able became telepaths essentially or psychics or were able to tap, tap into the um, the the divine or the ether or, or the spirit world. And we follow a woman called Paige and she is a um, clairvoyant, but clairvoyancy is outlawed in London. And so if you are caught being a clairvoyant, then you end up going to prison. But maybe there's something else going on as well. That is all I'm going to say. I did find it... I tried to read this a while ago and I found it very confusing. This time around, in January, I read The Pale Dreamer, which is a three short stories um, that come before The Bone Season and it helped me to understand what was going on quite a lot. So when I came to The Bone Season this time, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought that it was very well written. The world building is fantastic and although I found it incredibly confusing when I first tried to read it. I think it is actually because it is the kind of world building I like. It was just that the very nature of the world that was being built was not something I'd come across before and so my brain just really couldn't grasp it as well. So because it's the kind of world building I like, what I mean by that is that, that there is no info dumps. It is all given to you at the pace where the character finds out and as you need to know. So when the character is talking to someone and they're talking about things that are happening in the world, what they're discovering, that's when you get the information um, and I think that's really well done. It does assume a lot of knowledge on the reader's shoulders but I really enjoy that. I think it's really well done and it reads the most true to me. So I thought that was incredibly well done. I thought Paige's character was really, really well written. She was very well rounded and really, really interesting. And yeah, overall, I just found it really fun and really interesting. There's a lot going on with a caveat that you may need to read The Pale Dreamer. I would recommend if you like magical realism, fantasy, even science fiction, um, particularly if you like kind of paranormal or um, urban fantasy, I think you would enjoy this book. I gave it on Core Pile a 7.43, which works out to four stars. The next book that I read was Red, White and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. This was actually a reread for me. I read this a couple of years ago when I was still probably in my in my fourth month or something like that into making booktube and I'd been hearing non-stop about how incredible this book was so I read it I did really really enjoy it and at the time I gave it five stars but I wanted to reread it because I wasn't certain how much I had really loved it or how much of it was me buying into some hype so I wanted to reread it and also I wasn't certain whether it's the kind of book that I would necessarily reread like keep and reread you know every few years or something like that so I wanted to check on that. This is a book that is a male male romance between the son of the president of the United States and the prince of England. So yeah um, it's a very high profile friendship slash relationship and there's a lot of a lot at stake and so there's a lot going on. Um, it's enemies to lovers. It's not my normal thing. I'm not a huge romance reader and I really am not that into enemies to lovers generally. So that's part of the reason why I was a bit kind of like, did I, how much, did I really like it? I will say that the first probably half of the book I did enjoy, but I didn't love because it was very much kind of teen romance, angsty stuff with some, hey, we're famous thrown in there but as the book goes on it starts to delve into more political aspect of 
Alex, which is the son of the, well, so would it be Potus? No, president of the United, I don't know, Potuson, maybe? Anyway, the president's son. It goes more into his political aspirations and his political situation, but then it also starts to talk more about Henry, which is the Prince of England, and his situation and what it would mean for him to have this leak, why he feels like he is stuck pretending in a role. So I thought that was more, really interesting and really well written um, and so that's where I realised that actually that's probably what it was the first time around that I really really appreciated and really enjoyed. Given the new stuff I was saying about Copa or Ukape, beginning and ending have equal weight in terms of how I rate it from enjoyment. So my Corpile or Ukape rating was seven which gave worked out to four stars. So not the five stars I gave it originally, but like I said, that was because the first bit, although it was still fun, it was still well written, the first bit was more the kind of angsty teen romance that I don't necessarily love, whereas the second half became much more interesting from a political, sociological point of view. So that was Red, White and Royal Blue. Then I read or reread Crescent City House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Mass. It is in the favourites shelf and I really really enjoyed it. I wanted to reread it because the second book came out in the middle of February so I wanted to reread it so I could read the second book and know, remember exactly what was going on and yeah I really enjoyed my reread although I actually ended up giving it a slightly lower rating. So instead of five stars, I gave it 4.5 stars. And again, this is to do with the rating for beginning enjoyment and end enjoyment because the very beginning of this book, it is actually a little bit info dumpy. I mean, there's a lot going on in the world and in the characters' lives. And the first bit is the kind of reason why later events, catalyst for later events to happen. I sort of understand why it's a bit info dumpy, but it just was the reason why it got a slightly lower rating the second time around. I still really, really enjoyed it. I still really found it lots of fun, well written. I love Bryce's character. I love the tension between Bryce and Hunt. And I, do like the romance. Having said I'm not a huge romance reader, I think I'm starting to realise that maybe fantasy romance is something that I really enjoy because it's not necessarily the romance aspect of it that I don't like, but when that is the main focus of a book, it's not necessarily my favourite thing. It's not to say that I don't enjoy books. I've certainly read some romances that I've given four stars to, but yeah, when it's romance and something else, I think that's when I tend to like it more. So for those of you that don't know, this is a urban fantasy that takes place in Crescent City. Um, so I don't know whether this is our world in the future or an entirely different world. But either way, at some point in the history of this world, a rift was open between the reality that everything takes place in and a another world dimensions and other worldly creatures like angels and vampires and werewolves and fairies kind of broke into this other world and they have essentially enslaved humans although not in Crescent City um, so in a different part of the world but in Crescent City humans and all of those other creatures live in reasonable harmony I mean you know are they really in harmony but certainly humans are able to live free not be slaves we follow Bryce Quinlan who is a half fey half human character and she witness which well, doesn't witness but she is the first person on the scene of the murder of her best friend and a whole bunch of other friends of hers and then I think it's like three years two years later there's new evidence into what that was all about and who committed that murder or made that murder happen and so Bryce is called upon to help look into that. She is working with Hunt Althala. Hunt is a member of the Angel Guard, some romance and shoes. So that is Crescent City. Like I said I did still give it 4.5 stars so on Core Pile that is 7.99 which yeah is 4.5 stars. So a very high Core Pile rating and high 4.5 stars but just that beginning 
few hundred pages, a little bit info dumpy, and I mean, I, I, I hesitate to say negative things because I do really, really love this book, but it doesn't, I don't, I don't think it needs to be this long. I mean, I wasn't reading it thinking, God, why am I reading this long book? This is ridiculous. Cut it down, please. But it could be a bit shorter and it still would be as good. So, yeah, that was House of Earth and Blood. Let me just see if I can put it back in the shelf. Next up we had After Story by Larissa Berendt. So this is a kind of contemporary slash literary fiction. We follow a woman called Jasmine who is a, a lawyer. She doesn't have the best relationship with her mum but she wants to build on that relationship so she decides to take her mum on this literary tour of the United Kingdom and it's about them sort of developing their relationship but also it's about the experience they have when they're overseas what they each were thinking about and working through as they were traveling around looking at these sites so we have two perspectives um it's told from jasmine's perspective and then it's also told from her mum della's perspective and we also have the knowledge that when jasmine i think was like seven or something like that her older sister was kidnapped and has never been found and is assumed dead and was kidnapped like out of the house while the mother was asleep and they had had a party that night and all the adults including the mum were out of it and so there's a lot of guilt going on so there's a lot to unpack in this story both for the reader and for the characters in the story. I really, really enjoyed this one. It is quite sad and emotional, but I found it really, really moving. I think it is a fantastically written book. This is my third book by Larissa Brent, so my second fiction book by her and my, um, yeah, my third book. And I really enjoy her writing. I think she is able to get to the real guts of both the situation, but also the feelings for the people involved. She writes incredibly compelling characters. So this is, Larissa Berendt is an Australian Aboriginal author. The main characters in the book are Australian Aboriginal people. So there's also a bit of an undercurrent of what the situation for Australian Aboriginal people is within this country. How much were was the, the mother blamed for the daughter's disappearance? How much was she really listened to because she's Indigenous? So that was really, again, heartbreaking, but very well written and very interesting. So yeah, I really, really enjoyed this book. I would highly recommend if you like literary fiction or even contemporary fiction. Like I said, it kind of straddles the line between the two. And I definitely think that it's a really good way of learning a little bit more about Aboriginal the Aboriginal situation in Australia and how we are not really not racist in this country. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, really enjoyed this book. And in Corpile, or Ukape, I gave this one a, oh, I don't actually, I didn't actually write down what my Corpile rating was, but it worked out to be 4.5 stars. So definitely really, really enjoyed this one. And then my final book, which was my only five star book in this month, and that is Men at Arms by Terry Pratchett. This is a reread for me. Partly, I think that it came at exactly the right place and time. So I put, I was halfway through Crescent City, House of Sky and Breath. And then for various reasons, I decided to put it aside and I picked up Men at Arms because Terry Pratchett is a comfort read for me and I really needed a comfort read and I really, really enjoyed it. It is the second book in the Watch series. So Terry Pratchett has written the Discord series and the Discord series is a bunch of different fantasy books that are based on the Discworld. Within the entire overarching series of the Discworld are a bunch of smaller series that follow the same characters and grow throughout with the same characters. So this one is the second book in the Watch series so we follow the City Watch. We mostly follow Captain Carrot and well, at this stage, he is Captain Vimes and I think he's Sergeant Carrot. Anyway, we also follow a bunch of different characters. The main sort of driving plot of the book is a mystery and a crime, but it is a book that is about 
the fact that the watch is trying to diversify and it is trying to have a kind of um, equal opportunity employment. So they have employed a troll, they have employed a dwarf, they have employed a woman, but there's something else about the woman that makes her even more of like an equal opportunity employment person. So it is a commentary on that in society, equal opportunity, why we need it, what it means, all of that sort of thing. And yeah, it's really fun, really well written. I just think Terry Pratchett writes fantastic books. He really makes the social commentary about the world that we live in and the various different social politics and politics and decisions we make. He just makes really interesting, really well articulated comments while being in a fantasy book, which is funny and silly at the same time. So amazing, amazing series. Highly recommend if you like fantasy, if you enjoy sort of satirical humour, if you have ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I think you would enjoy this one. If you read Neil Gaiman, I think you'd enjoy Terry Pratchett. But yeah, so really, really enjoyed this one. And like I said, it gave it five stars. On Core Pile is 9.5, so definitely the highest rated book for the month. As I said, I did read half of House of Sky and Breath, which is the second Crescent City book by Sarah Jamas. I am intending to finish that off in March, but I'm probably going to read it for the Aurelium Gear Up, which I think is the third week of March. I also am a quarter of the way through Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier, so that is rolling over into March and I will hopefully finish it in the next few days. Um, but yeah, that was my wrap up for the month of February. If you have any thoughts on any of the books that I read, if you have read them yourself, let me know what you thought of them. If you have seen any of the books that I've talked about and would like to read them, let me know that as well. If you would like to leave me a comment but you don't know what, then leave me some kind of butterfly emoji because we have this beautiful cover here with the butterfly. All of my social media details are listed in the description below, so if you'd like to go and follow me on any of those other platforms, please feel free to do so. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would absolutely love it if you would subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up. And yeah, like I said, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.